What's up YouTube? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to replace the timing chain on this R53 Mini Cooper S. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and stick around. You're gonna to wanna to watch this whole video. No matter which Mini Cooper you drive, check out my Facebook group. It's called Mini Cooper DIY. I'll leave a link to that in the description or you just go to Facebook and type in Mini Cooper DIY in the search bar and you can find it that way. Let's get to the video. Okay, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get your car put up on jack stands just so you have access to the wheel well. My car has been on jack stands pretty much since I bought it, so I can make all these videos for you guys. So I've already got that taken care of. Next, you're gonna to wanna to remove the negative battery cable from your battery, it's in the trunk of your car. Next, you're gonna to wanna to pull your fender liner out of the way. Mine's already undone. If you don't know how to undo this, I'll link in the description to a video of how to replace your crank pulley and uh, in that video I'll show you exactly how to take this off. But just pull it back, then I just take a small bungee cord, put it through a hole, and I just attach it to the hood strut. You're going to need to release the tension on your serpentine belt. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to use this tool, I'll put a link to it in the description. And you're going to put this circular part is going to go on this bolt right here above, right here by the dipstick. Obviously, it's just a circle. It doesn't bolt on. It just sits there as a, so it can rotate. And then these two pins right here go into the two pins that are down in there so that you can then pull this handle back, which will allow you to put this pin in the spot right there. I'll get a, a, a good picture of it with the pin in so I can show you. But it's right back there. Let me see if I can get the light. Right there where the light is, you can see that metal, that little thin piece of metal. I'll put an arrow on it. And uh, that's there's two holes in that, and you're going to want to put this pin in the bottom hole once you've pulled the tensioner back. One thing that gives you more room when you're using your belt tensioner tool is if you remove this vacuum line. And the way you do that is by pinching these buttons on the side and pulling straight down. And it comes off. Just get that out of the way. That just gives you more room to rotate the belt tensioner tool. Well, the directions say this is a two-person job, but I've done this by myself. So it's a, a one-person job. Just make sure you're pulling this straight back and use your other hand to put this in. You can actually look right straight down and see it. So now that that pin's in, I'll give you guys a better view of that. See, that's the pin I just put in right there. And there's a little metal tab right above that spring. Let's see if I can get it to my phone to focus on it. But there's two holes in it. And you want to put the pin in the bottom hole once you pull the spring back, or once you pull the tensioner back. Okay, next you're going to want to take a T27 and remove these four T27 Torx bolts that are holding down your intercooler shroud. When pulling these out, take notice the short ones go in the front, the long ones go in the back. Then just go ahead and pull your shroud off and put it out of the way somewhere. Put one right here. Okay, next, you're going to take these eight T27s out to remove your intercooler. I'm not going to make you watch me take all eight of these out. Let's go ahead and remove these. Repeat that process on the other side. 
Next, go ahead and remove these little brackets right here that held your intercooler shroud on. It's an eight millimeter. Okay, once you have those brackets removed, you can go ahead and pull your intercooler off. My intercooler boots have seen better days. Luckily, I have another set. Next, I'm gonna go on to the motor mount. I'm just gonna remove the ground strap. There's a bolt that goes through here that could fall out, so go ahead and hold on to that on the bottom and break this loose. It's a 13 millimeter. I'm going to go ahead and keep the bolt and the nut attached to the ground strap so I don't lose them. Next you're going to want to put a block of wood on your jack. Place this jack underneath your oil pan and support your engine. Now you're not going to lift your engine because it's still bolted down, but you're just going to put the jack under it so when you unbolt it, nothing falls. Next I'm going to loosen this bolt on the top of this motor mount. It's an 18 millimeter. I might need a cracker bar, I'm not sure. No. Next, I'm gonna loosen the two 16 millimeter bolts. One is found right here where you see my, my uh, socket. And then the other one is found in the back, right there. Okay, once you have them loose, just go ahead and pull them out. Okay, at this point, you should be able to pull your motor mount out. There we go. And there's this little clip right here on your on your uh, side of your head. You're going to take this red part and pull it out as far as you can. So you're going to push in on this little button right here and pull it. So then that comes off. Okay, next up is a 16 millimeter bolt on the back of your motor mount. I sprayed some penetrating oil on there earlier. You might need a breaker bar to get that one loose. Now, as you can see, if your motor mount looks like this, you need a new one. So do I. So from by the front rotor where your crank pulley is, right above it, right here where my finger is, there's an E12 Torx bit. Many, the Bentley manual tells you you need a special tool to remove this. The special tool is just an E12. I'm gonna use a ratcheting uh, breaker bar to get it out. Then once it's broken loose, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and use my electric ratchet. That's the bolt. It's definitely pretty corroded. I'll clean that up. Now you can go ahead and remove this 16 millimeter bolt. If you take this bolt out before you take out that bottom bolt, your motor mount will rotate. <clears throat> so if you leave that bolt in, it just comes right out. What will happen is when you're turning the bottom bolt, this will just turn like that until it hits the valve cover and possibly cracking your valve cover. To keep track of this bolt, I'm just gonna put it right back where I got it. Okay, now you're gonna get your cam sprocket tool. I'll put a link to where I got this in the description. This is everything that's inside. But you're gonna take this out. And this is what you're gonna use to support your motor. Okay, I jacked the motor up a little bit just to get everything to line up better. Slide that in where the motor mount bolts in normally. 
then take these two bolts that come with the kit and it's a 19 millimeter they're 19 millimeter I'm gonna use a magnet in order to install it just get it started with the magnet then put in the next one I just use the magnet so I don't drop the bolt when I'm putting it in the hole. You take your 19 millimeter socket and go ahead and hand tighten them. Oh, I'm gonna get more than hand tighten. I'm gonna actually tighten them. And then once they're hand tightened, go ahead and tighten them down with the ratchet. I'm just getting them relatively snug. And it also comes with this bolt, which I don't believe is going to be threading into anything. So I'm just going to set it in there to keep everything from sliding around. And I'm going to lower the engine slightly. I'm still going to keep their jack holding the engine up. Basically, I just have that bracket in there now. If my jack gives out, that's gonna save me. But I'd, I don't trust one or the other, but both together, I do trust. Okay, next you're gonna take a 13 millimeter socket and remove your idler pulley. I have a detailed video on how to remove your idler pulley in the description. That's your idler pulley. If it's not in good shape, I would definitely recommend replacing it. Okay, next you're going to want to take your crank pulley off. It's a 15 millimeter bolt and you're going to need a crank pulley tool. I have a detailed video on how to do this in the description of this video. Yours might be slightly different if you have the OEM pulley and that's what I'm removing in the video that I'm linking to in the description of this video. Make sure you replace this bolt every time you take it out. Your crank pulley puller kit will come with one of these bolts. If you buy the one that's in my description, put it in and screw that in by hand as far as you can. Okay, if you have the ATI super damper, you're gonna have to remove these three bolts that are 12.8 millimeters. And then what you're gonna do is when you install your crank pulley removal tool, you're gonna install the bolts in those three holes where you just took those bolts out. If you have an OEM puller, you're gonna pull it out the way I did in my crank pulley removal video that I'll link to in the description. Once you have your pulley tool installed, these bolts, you wanna make sure you hand tighten them all the way until they bottom out, but just hand tighten them and make sure they're even. So when you start pulling on this, it pulls on your, on your crank pulley evenly and then take a with my tool, it's a 19 millimeter wrench. Then you're gonna put your wrench on tighten and you're just gonna tighten this bolt until it pulls your dampener out a little bit. Okay, now that the crank pulley is out, we can go ahead and move on to the serpentine belt tensioner. Okay, the easiest bolt to get to is going to be this one right here. It's a 16 millimeter. A 5 8 will also work because I don't have a 16 millimeter. But you're going to take this one out. I sprayed penetrating lube on all these, so mine are coming out pretty easy. Then there's a 10 millimeter bolt right here where my ratchet is. Let's go ahead and take that one out. Okay, I can't really get a shot of this last bolt. It's also a 16 millimeter, but you can see my wrench moving right here. That's where it is. You can get it from the from the bottom. And it's a it's either a 16 it's a 16 millimeter, but you can use a 5 8 Turns out there's also a 10 millimeter right here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out. Okay, now that you have all four of those bolts out, just fish your tensioner out. Seems taking it out the bottom comes out pretty easy because you have the this bracket holding your motor up right now in the way. So out the bottom comes out pretty easy. 
Okay, now I'm gonna remove this bracket right here that holds the intercooler. It's just in the way of this bolt to remove the valve cover. There's three eight millimeter bolts. There's one right here, there's one right here, and there's another one down at the bottom. In order to get to the bolt on the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this hose because it's in the way of my, my extension reaching to where the bolt is. So I'm gonna just go ahead and use these hose clamp pliers. I have a link to those in the description if you wanna know where to get them, or you can just use regular pliers for this. Once you get that clamp back, I'm going to take a screwdriver. I sprayed some WD-40 in here. I'm just going to pop the hose off. Okay, to get to that hard bolt on the bottom, I used a quarter inch drive, eight millimeter, with a quarter inch drive extension on it. That's what, the only thing that would give me enough room with a wobble uh, extension right there on an electric ratchet. It's linked to this electric ratchet in my description. But, uh, that gave me enough room to where I could put my finger in there and I could actually put, let's see if I can show you. I was putting my finger right down here so I could set the eight millimeter on. And I was bringing the eight millimeter from this direction. And then I would flip it out like that. That was the only way I could figure out how to get to it. It was actually pretty easy once I figured it out. Okay, next up, remove the inter intercooler bracket on the other side. There's an eight millimeter right here. And another eight millimeter right here. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect my spark plugs. Okay, so now I'm gonna take off these four Actually, first I'm going to take off the clip on the or the plug on the back for the coil pack. Okay, first thing you're going to do is you're going to take this red clip right here where my screwdriver is, and you're going to pop that out as far as you can towards the passenger side of the vehicle. And then once you've done that, you're going to press down on this little button right here, and you're just going to pull it towards the coolant canister and it hits the coolant canister so it doesn't come off all the way so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the uh, coil packs or the coil pack and then uh, it'll already be off because I already disconnected it okay now take a 10 millimeter socket just remove all four of these and now if that's loose Pull everything out, set it aside. Next, go ahead and remove this PCV hose. You can either you can probably just pull the hose off right here, but I'm going to use a 24 millimeter wrench and I'm going to pull this off holding this hose. So this will stay still and this will spin. Well, once I removed this, it came off the hose really easy. So I, I would suggest just pulling the hose off and leaving this on. In fact, I'm gonna put it back on. Now go around and remove all 12 of the uh, bolts holding your valve cover on. In order to get to this bolt in the front side of the valve cover, it's got all these vacuum hoses and stuff hooked to it. I just pull the vacuum hoses off of it and this part pulls straight up. And then you can access the bolt. Okay, so on this bolt right here, I ended up using, actually on all of them, I ended up using a deep eight millimeter six point socket made by Craftsman. Um, it, this specific bolt was stripping when I was turning it with the, with the 12 point wrench and I didn't have an eight millimeter deep socket, so I had to go to Ace Hardware, go buy one. But uh, six points is what you need. If you use a 12 point, it'll strip. Okay, now just go ahead and pull your valve cover off. Okay, next you're going to remove the timing chain tensioner bolt. It's a 19 millimeter. I have a detailed video on how to do this in the description. But I'm just going to, I've already broke mine loose, but I'm going to take it out right now. Okay, once you have the bolt off, you can go ahead and just reach up there and pull the timing chain 
tensioner out. And that's what it looks like. Next, you want to remove these two 10 millimeter, they're 10 millimeter uh, Allen keys, but I'm using a T55 Torx bit because I don't have a 10 millimeter. And <clears throat> and it fits perfectly. That's what it looks like. Go ahead and remove your cam position sensor. It's a 10 millimeter. Okay, next you're going to remove the timing chain cover. It's going to be all these 10 millimeter bolts. I believe there's 11, and well, the book says there's 11, but I can only count nine. Uh, eight of these and one Torx. That's a T25 Torx up at the top. I'll show you that right now. But I think there's supposed to be two, and I believe there's supposed to be one right here. But uh, mine doesn't have one there for some reason. And uh, I don't know if that's where all this oil is coming from. But I'll find out. Right there where my thumb is, that's the, the T25 I was talking about up the top. And then towards the back of the motor, right there where you can see there's an empty spot. I think there was another one at one time. It's not there anymore, so I'll have to replace it. When removing all the bolts, make sure you notice that the one right here above your crank pulley is longer than all the other ones. So that one needs to go back there. I sprayed some penetrating oil around the edges of this cover and then I pried it out with my uh, just a screwdriver and it came out pretty easily. So now just go ahead and pull it out. Okay, and the way I pulled it out, this right here, it, holding this up is just a Phillips screw. I pulled that down and then I pulled the, the timing chain cover straight down through here and out. Okay, at this point, go ahead and remove the spark plugs. Just so you can rotate your engine without there being compression. Okay, now put your cam lock tool on that I showed you at the beginning of the video. So that you can take this bolt out right here. It's a 18 millimeter. And uh, the way I put this on to get it to line up is I put the crank bolt back in. So I could rotate the crank until the holes lined up to slide this in. And that, then it slid in pretty easily. So I'm just going to use a breaker bar and an 18 millimeter socket and break this loose. Now that it's loose, I can go ahead and take the bolt all the way out using a ratchet. Okay, go ahead and pull that out. Um, it's recommended to replace this. I'm replacing mine with an ARP, but I'll give you the torque specs for both when I put it in. Okay, so now I should be able to pull this timing chain and sprocket off the cam and then pull I'm gonna pull the chain off of the lower sprocket on the crankshaft by lowering the timing chain sprocket then just pull it straight up now where you took these covers off with the the 10 millimeter allen or the t55 torx bit there's 10 millimeter bolts that hold the cam chain guides on. Go ahead and remove those. We'll remove one bolt, remove the guide, and then remove the other bolt. Then you just pull the, the guide rail straight out. Now I'll do the same on the other side. Then just go ahead and pull that guide back up. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the new timing chain guides. And I just put the bolt into the hole on the guide and then slid the guide up by where it mounts to and just 
I'm hand tightening it so it doesn't fall out. Now on this side, see this spot right here? That has to slide onto a pin. Let me get a shot of the pin for you. Right there at the end of where my extension is, there's a pin right there. And the end of that guide rail has to sit on that. So I'm just going to go ahead and slide this part down until it's on that pin. I'm just going to reach in with my hand and put this screw in, or bolt. I'm going to thread it as far as I can by hand. Okay, now place your new timing chain. This is a cryo-treated one I got from Speed Tech Motorsports. Place, if you have a just an OEM one, there'll be a copper mark, right, or the just the link will be copper. But this one's been cryo-treated, so it's not just marked. But you want to put that where that arrow is. I don't know if you can see the arrow. And then uh, this mark or this uh, cutout right here goes in the little pin that's on your camshaft, and you're gonna lower it in making sure that these two marks, or there'll be copper links on an OEM chain, line up with those two marks on your crankshaft uh, sprocket. Okay, you're gonna lower it in, and then with your other hand, you're gonna reach underneath and you're gonna put this chain onto your crankshaft sprocket. First, you have to get it around your uh, you know, where the crankshaft sprocket goes on to, which is kind of difficult. Okay, and then once that goes on there, make sure you put those two marks on the right spot on your sprocket, like I said earlier. And then go ahead and take your crank bolt. I'll link to this ARP one in the description where you can get it. Or your cam bolt, not crank bolt. I'm just gonna put it in there a little bit so I can actually check my timing. Make sure I have the sprocket on, or I have it on the lower sprocket right before I put that in all the way, because if I don't, I have to pull it back off. I don't know if it's going to pick up on camera, but they are definitely right where they're supposed to be. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten up my cam bolt. Before I go ahead and torque this down, I'm going to tighten my timing chain guides before I forget. Um, the book says 21 foot-pounds. I'm just going to torque them down snug. Okay, if you're using an ARP bolt, you're going to torque it down to 95 foot-pounds. And if you're using an OEM bolt, you're going to torque it down to 75 foot-pounds. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the timing chain tensioner. If you're gonna re if you're replacing an old tensioner, make sure you push that plunger in first. But I'm using a new one, and I suggest you do the same. And then take the bolt, put it back on. The torque spec for the timing chain tensioner is 46 foot-pounds. I just get it as snug as I can. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull the seal out for my crankshaft seal so I can replace it. Just using a pick tool. I'll put a link to this gasket kit in the description. But I'm going to grab a new one out of here. Press that back in. Once it sits flush like that, it's in there good. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and replace the outer gasket for this. 
The way I'm going to install it is I'm going to look for this round part right here. And it can only go on one way and have all the shapes work. So I'm hoping, I'm just guessing right now if this is the right way. I'm just going to set it on there just to make sure all the bends in it work out. And then it's not twisted. So far it seems like I picked the right way. Yeah, so I picked it the right way. So now just go ahead and put the gasket in the groove. Okay, now that it's all the way in, I'm going to just go ahead and press it all the way around to make sure that it's seated. Now, these other two gaskets, they're two different sizes, so it's easy to tell which one goes where. And it looks like they only go in, they can go in either way. So let's go ahead and press those in. Okay, when you're installing your your uh, timing chain cover, you'll see on this, this little thing that's inside of your cam, or inside the cover, and you can see right here where my finger is, there's a flat spot. You need to align that flat spot with the flat spot on your crank when you're putting it on in order for it to go on all the way. Just like that. Okay, now that I have everything hand tightened, I'm gonna go ahead and snug everything down. I can't really get a torque wrench in here, but it says uh, for the M6 bolts, nine foot pounds, and for the M8 bolts, 13 foot pounds. But I'm just gonna snug everything. Go ahead and remove the timing chain guide, or the installation tool. Okay, the manual didn't list, or I couldn't find a torque spec for these. It just says to reinstall them. So I'm just going to snug them down. Okay, now I'm going to reinstall the belt tensioner. Okay, so what I do is I, is I fish the tensioner back from the bottom above the axle so I can get it back as far as I can. And I put it in, and then I slide it as far up as I can. First, you got to get it over by the alternator, and then it comes up. And then you just got to fish it around the supercharger pulley. Then from the top, just go ahead and get a bolt on it just to keep it from sliding trying to keep out of the way of the camera just get one started and then move on to the other two bolts or other three bolts 
Okay, so what I did was I get this first 16 millimeter, not all the way tight, it's about a quarter inch away. And then what I did is I put the bottom 10 millimeter in the hole that it goes into on the bracket. And then I pressed up on the bracket as hard as I could until I got that bolt hole to line up. If you do it in any other order than that, it doesn't seem to work. But once you get those two lined up, you should be able to get one more lined up. And once you have three lined up, it shouldn't be hard to get four lined up. But the first two are definitely, if you don't do it in that order, it's pretty hard. Okay, then when you get to this very last screw, what you're gonna do is put a screwdriver right up against it like that, and you're gonna pry downwards until you can get this bolt into the hole. And it's only gonna move a little bit, but it works. That's how I got mine going. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put my valve cover back on. Okay, the Bentley manual says to tighten these in sequence from inside to outside, down to nine foot-pounds. I like to barely get them tight the first time, even though it is only nine pounds that you're tightening them down to. But then I like to go around the whole thing twice just to make sure that it's seated properly. Now go ahead and install your spark plugs. I'm gonna put mine back in the same order I took them out, or the same place. I will be replacing them shortly because I will be doing a supercharger pulley, so I'll go one step colder. So that's why I'm not replacing them now. Now go ahead and install your coil pack. Don't forget to plug it in. It goes this way. Coil pack also torques down to nine foot pounds. I'm just gonna snug it. Okay, to put your coil packs back, your coils back on, it's one, two, three, four, and they're numbered. So this is cylinder one, goes in cylinder one. Number two is right here, goes in number two. Number three is this one, goes right to number three. And then number four is this one, goes over here. Put that beneath. And go ahead and press those in. Okay, well now I'm gonna go ahead and put my intercooler brackets back on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my PCV hoses on. Next, I'm going to reinstall the cam position sensor. And go ahead and plug it back in. Make sure you press this red clip back in. Okay, now I'm going to remove this bracket that was supporting my engine. I have more support with my jack holding it up. I'm doing this so I can reinstall my motor mount. Now, even though I know I need to replace this, I'm going to do that later, but I'm going to reinstall it right now. Because it needs to support my motor. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to go ahead and line this bracket up on the motor mount bracket and put a bolt in it. And then I'm going to try to get the bolt started into the cylinder head. This front engine mount bracket torques down to 74 foot-pounds. I'm just going to snug mine because I'm replacing my, I'm going to be replacing this anyway. So I'm not going to go through all the work of getting it all tightened. <clears throat> I'll be replacing it before I drive the car. 
Okay, now, now I gotta try to get this bolt to line up with this hole. It's back about two inches. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of lowering the jack and pulling back on the engine. Try to get it to go in. Let me go ahead and uh, put those on. Don't forget this long E12 bolt that goes up through the bottom. I'm not gonna put mine in since I'm replacing that anyway. Okay, go ahead and install your idler pulley. I have detailed instructions on how to replace that in the, in the link in the description. Get it on as far as you can by hand. Which isn't going to be very far. Okay, next your, your installing kit will come with this, or the puller that you bought will also come with this bolt for install reinstalling it. So, uh, you're going to put that in as far as you can by hand, and then you're going to tighten it with an Allen wrench. So once you get it uh, as tight as you can, go ahead and uh, take this bolt back out. Because you, you just want to make sure you've pressed this on as far as you can with this bolt, then you're going to take this out and go to the next step. out of air. air it up. Okay, so off camera I took the old after I took the the this polar bolt or the bolt that I used to install it, the long one, after I took that out, I took the old crank pulley and I just ran it in all the way to make sure that this pulley is all the way seated. And now I can use a flashlight, I can look in there and I can see that it is seated. So now I can go ahead and install the, the new crank pulley bolt with some thread locker on it. Okay, so I have blue thread locker on there. Go ahead and put that in. <clears throat> I'm go ahead and install it with the, this air tool. This air tool doesn't go to 85 pounds, so... So I'll use a torque wrench for the rest of the way. Or actually, I'm going to use my impact gun. And go ahead and make sure you reroute your hose or your, your uh, serpentine belt. Um, I'm going to replace mine later on because I'm going to do my supercharger pulley. I'd recommend replacing it right now if uh, you haven't recently, but uh, I'm going to use the old one. Okay, so now you're going to put your belt tensioner tool back in there. And you're just going to re you're just going to get enough tension off it so you can pull that pin out. and then release it as slow as you can. Don't forget to reconnect this. I got these silicone uh, intercooler boots. I'll put a link to, uh, in the description where I got these. My old ones were in bad shape. Go ahead and slide these underneath before you put your intercooler on. Make sure when you're putting these back on, you see if there's two different sizes. I'm putting the long ones on the bottom and the short ones on the top. Probably works the same if you go the other way around, as long as you do a, the opposite, long on the bottom or long on the top or short on the bottom, short on the top. Go 
ahead and slide the inner colon in. So I'm going to go ahead and install these on this side. With this being as sturdy as it is, I'm not going to use these inner cooler brackets. Weight reduction. Go ahead and tighten these down all the way. All right now you can go ahead and put your shroud on. The long bolts go on the back. And the short bolts go in the front. Don't forget to check out my Facebook group, Mini Cooper DIY. Link to, the, to that in the description. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, please give it a thumbs down, and I'll catch you in the next video.